today to showcase a new technology, a new tool. We're using the RAS mapper to show uh, how the flood progressed and occurred in this area. Again, we're in Brothdale, um, and you can see the extent of the flooding flooded into Ross Park, um, into uh, the North London Athletic Fields, and the Elgin parking lot here in Western Campus. So now we're using the Google Earth technology and the February 2018 layer uh, to look at a 3D version of what that flood looked like and the extent of the flooding. So here we're again looking at the north branch of the Thames uh, and focusing in on the University of Western Ontario, uh, the Elgin parking lot. So as you can see the area in blue, uh, that's the extent of the flooding showing where the natural floodplain is. We see this as a really effective way um, in engaging the community and students in our community uh, and teaching them about flooding. Uh, so for students in particular everything nowadays is so technology based. So for us to be able to show this to the students, for them to use the tool to manipulate it, to uh, look at the extent of flooding within their community, I think that's a really great way for us to engage them um, and then uh, use that as a springboard to talk about uh, flooding in our in our own communities. So when we're engaging with the community about flooding and the messages behind flooding, uh, there's a few big ideas or key concepts that uh, we really want to get across. Some transferable knowledge, so not only do they understand flooding in their own community, but flooding as a whole. Uh, so the first thing that we really want them to understand is what a watershed is. Uh, how water is getting to where it's going, um, moving from areas of high elevation to low elevation. Um, not only you know larger watersheds, the, the Thames River watershed, but sub-watersheds within that. Uh, we also want them to understand floodplains, um, the fact that floodplains are natural and flooding that is natural. Um, so where floodplains tend to exist in low-lying areas um, and the benefits that floodplains provide as well. The next key concept or building block that we would like the public to understand is the role that flood structures play uh, or flood control structures play in flood management. Um, so understanding why we have dams, dikes, um, the importance of wetlands and natural areas and helping manage those flood waters. We also wanted people to understand how the natural landscape has changed over time. Um, how the surfaces, our natural surfaces, have become more urbanized and the impact that storm water has on our flood events. Uh, and then finally, we would like people to understand the risks associated with flooding um, and why it is you know, the number one natural hazard in the world. Uh, we want people to not only understand the risks but be prepared for flooding events in their own communities.